Let's go to our next caller from the 818 area code. Caller from 818, tell us, uh, tell us who you are and what's on your mind. Hey, David, this is Jesse from Los Angeles. How you doing, man? Good. Go ahead, Jesse. Hey, uh, so I, I live out here in L.A., and uh, the Michael Moore uh, Fahrenheit 11.9 cell, they bombed at the box office. Yep. It uh, only made like $3 million. And um, I saw it over the weekend, and I was wondering if I could do a quick little film review for you to kind of maybe encourage people to go see it. Um, I don't know your views on Michael Moore, but I think that the film was marketed improperly mm. as, as a Trump film. Right. And it's really not a movie about Donald Trump. Okay. Um, which was pretty surprising. And I don't know if you saw it or not. No, I didn't. But it really just deals about how we got here. It really focuses probably like, 30, like a third of the film is about the Clint water crisis. Um, a third of the film is about fascism and the Germany in the 1930s and how it relates to you know, modern-day Trumpism and how Democrats, centrism by Democrats, has kind of enabled the rise of the hard right, similarly to how in the Germany in the 1930s, centrists enabled the rise of the Nazi party, which was a minority party, you know, that, that kind of got, uh, gained more power by, you know, de de uh, disenfranchising liberals on the left. Cause, yeah, you know, the thing really is, Jesse, I don't think that the film, so I haven't seen the film and I don't, I don't actually plan to. And it's okay. not that I think that the film is not a good film. It's not that I don't like Michael Moore. I think what it is more is that even what you're talking about, like on the program, we've been talking about the ways in which uh, Democrats failing to actually be progressive enables politics to move to the right. We've talked about Flint. We've talked about all these issues. It's more just that I feel that we've been having overload of these issues now for two years under Trumpism and Flint has been going on for, for so long at this point. It's more that I feel that I'm unsure that given the limited time I have and the infrequency with which I go and see movies, then I'm going to go and watch that one is more what it is. It's not anything critical about the film itself, you know? Right. I think that's actually exactly why people didn't go see it, because I think our life is like a 24 hour Trump film. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I think that's a big part of it. But if you're looking for sort of encouragement, it does break down um, the, the facts of how America is actually a leftist country. Yeah. And it gives you all the facts behind that. And I think if you're just it's a dark film. It is a it's kind of a horror story, but it's right. not all about Trump if you're uh, if that's what you were expecting. So um, if, if people are sort of looking for some encouragement about what who our country actually is, it's just it just encourages us to vote and actually well, take place good. in a you know, yeah. participate in a democracy. So, hey, Jesse, anyway. where, where are you calling from? It's uh, I'm curious where you are. It sounds extraordinarily exciting. <laughs> I'm actually at LAX right now. Oh, you're at the airport. I'm at LAX airport. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. sorry. <laughs> all right. No, no problem at all. I appreciate the call. It's good to hear this perspective because we, I, I've been hearing mostly negative things about the film. And uh, all right, Jesse, thanks for the call. Have a good flight. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye.